can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Stacey Porter Bilger of ProofDigital.com. And Stacey, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. And we have a mutual friend, um, Duncan Olney. So big shout out to Duncan for introducing Stacey. Um, Duncan runs FirebellyMarketing.com. And they help lots of different types of food and beverage companies run marketing and get more exposure and sell more product, right? And uh, I also had Kevin Hurrigan of Spinotech on. He is an agency owner since 1995. So it's interesting to hear his journey uh, and what he went through. And just a variety of interviews from SaaS to um, authors to leaders and everything like that. So check out more at inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And how do we do that? We actually help you run your podcast. We are an easy button for a company to launch or run a podcast. We do strategy, the accountability, and the full execution and production of a show. So um, the person could just really build the relationship and run their business and not worry about all the other stuff. We call it our magic elves. You know, we just are in the background. So, uh, you know, Stacy, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way to do that than the profile of people and companies I admire and share with the world what they're working on. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com to learn more. There's a lot of free resources also on Inspired Insider. Um, and without further ado, Stacey Porter Bilger, she's founder of Proof Digital. Um, she helps companies understand who buys their product and why, okay, which is the strategy, right? So, you know, really get digging deep on those companies so they can best serve their customers is mission critical. And she spent over a decade honing this strategy at Proof Digital and even before that, um, doing strategy and marketing. So Stacy's strategy was to turn Proof Digital into a data-driven business growth marketing agency that has a strategic approach. So what she does is she blends today's marketing tools with traditional sales funnel processes, and you could check it out at proofdigital.com. And Stacy, thanks for joining me. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. It's so great to be here. So um, start. tell us a little bit about Proof Digital and, and what you do. Sure. Um, I mean, you you gave a great intro uh, there. Um, uh, proof was birthed out of basically the, you know, the idea that there's so many people out there who just have, um, you know, a new product, a new idea that they want to get found. But the biggest problem that we came across when I, before I started Proof, I worked for um, an organization called the Venture Center, which was in Indiana, had a lot of high growth companies. And their biggest issue was, you know, um, how, how do I... How do, marketing, how do I get my uh, people to find this great product or service I have? And they, um, you know, were looking um, to sell it to everybody. And that was a mistake, number one. And number two is, um, you know, um, what problem do they solve? And um, and how do are they going to make the life better of those who can consume it? And so just basically helping companies understand that as, and well, as well as use data, because there's a lot of data out there that kind of tells you the story. Um, of how to get in front of that potential customer. And so that's really what Proof was birthed, that just really our addiction to help um, companies and nonprofits and organizations overall just to, to be that answer when somebody's looking for their the problem that they solve. Yeah. I mean, it's not um, the field of dreams, build it and they will come situation, right? No. You got to drive people to those services and products. And you know, I know that you were at the Indiana Venture Center um, and did a lot of you know social entrepreneurs and other things. Talk about what you did there and, and then what you sure. brought to with your experience there to Proof Digital. Yeah, I mean, it was a great um, incubator of ideas and talent, to be truthful. I mean, you had people who all the way from, you know, had a solution for, uh, you know, kidney dis- dis- dialysis to people who actually thought they saw cold fusion. That's another story, which they did not. 
Um, but um, just a lot of ideas. And really, the, the big thing really was working with these companies, pulling talent in across the board. Um, we work with universities in our state, Notre Dame, IU, Purdue, um, who were leaders in innovation um, together with these companies. And uh, to, is, is there a market there? And ha- I mean, putting a team together, finding capital for these companies. So it was like a soup to nuts type of situation where a company would come, you'd yeah. help make the connections for them. They'd also maybe meet these and and try and find like a product market fit or see where that was at and also fund like it seems like everything. And there was coaching involved. Yes. There there was. And and I hung out with, I mean, folks who actually were really successful. I mean, the funder of it. Um he uh, developed uh, the technology uh, for um, fiber optics. So it was Serent and had sold that in 99 for $7 billion. So people in the room were, had done it before and knew how, what it took. Um, so I hung out with all those folks and then also um, worked with folks who, like I said, I might come up with an idea. And you have to listen. You shouldn't poo-poo any idea. I shouldn't say that correctly. But, I mean, every, there's always an opportunity. And so I, I mentioned that cold fusion idea. Well, I had no idea if that was right. I, I figured it wasn't, but I had a, a meeting in the basement of Notre Dame with a physicist and connected those two and realized real quick that he was, you know, uh, not on the right track. But, you know, when you come across those things, you just kind of connect people and then you figure out if they actually have something. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times in business, I feel like what someone starts with is not what they end with, right? I mean, I always think of like the yeah. post-it note I think they were trying to invent something else. And then the post-it note came out of it. So who knows? The person's trying to find, you know, work with yeah. cold fusion and some <laughs> other invention comes out of it, right? It does. And so you start connecting people to those ideas. And and the big thing really was, okay, um, my role was putting teams together and understand the market strategy for these companies and to really dig deep and see, okay, who, who what problem are you solving? Is there somebody who's got a some cash in their pocket to actually pay for it. Um, and where do you want to position yourself? Um, who are your competitors? I mean, can you, you you can't take on the big guy, Amazon, but there's a position for you to be to be found. And so where 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 can you start uh, positioning yourself? And it's not a and you should never it's not a race to the bottom. If you have the race to the bottom, it's not a it's not a good, not a good winning strategy either. What did you take, Stacy, from working there? the Indiana Venture Center to what you do at Proof Digital? A a couple of things. One is even just that process of listening and not, I mean, listening to those clients and under, or those companies that have that dream that want to be that solution. And then again, the connection piece and connecting them with some folks out there from um, who um, can be helpful. The same, the same time is that um, you really have to hone in again i'll repeat it again what problem do you side solve how can you cr- really under uh, communicate how you're going to like make me my life better as a consumer of your product and 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 tug up those those emotional um uh points that gets me to say okay this this i have to work with this particular company and that you're credible because you have to point out that you can actually solve it. And then how do I work with you? And helping companies do that and then w- and then positioning them online or wherever it is. So when somebody's looking for them, and there's there various tools that exist for the digital space. So when they find you, you're there. The people who are actually looking for your services there. So just um, taking it to the next level, helping define it, but then actually... When somebody's looking for you, you're there. And that's the that's the marketing piece, too, and, and, and making sure that's what you do. What are some of the common mistakes? You've worked with a lot of companies. What are some yeah. of the common mistakes you see them make? You mentioned one, which is like a company trying to target everyone, right? Yes. So what are some uh, common mistakes? Common mistakes. Um, one is, again, focusing on, two, I mean, that you're, you can solve everybody's problem. And then also not... Um, it's a balancing act between niching down, you know, you, you, not everybody's going to, and then also when you're early on, you don't want to close the door on other, other things. So looking at the data, um, there's a company um, in uh, Northern part of our, our state, um, they're, they're called your space and they kind of birthed out of the pandemic in which they um, have uh, office pods. Right. And so 
Um, but there's a there's a market actually not only in office pods, but the education community, libraries, ed- educators, from a standpoint of cost of of expansion. And so there's not a lot of people playing in that, but because the data says there's not enough, there's not a lot of competitors in there. So positioning those, looking for the opportunities in the market where they can position, where you have multiple buyers. So I think looking at balancing the act of not being everybody's answer, but then also starting to niche down um, along the way. Does that make sense? What made you start your own? You know, I'm sure it seemed like exciting work. You're probably working with amazing people. What made you branch out and say, I'm going to, I'm just going to go off and start my own company? Uh, a couple things. W- one is um, I'm, um, I'm a mom, to be truthful. And I, and I have got kids. At the time when I started the company, I wasn't feeling great. I was having um, immune issues. And so I, I, I think I had to think differently about my day. And so I had a I had to be more entrepreneurial. And then I was hanging around um, all these people who were really creative. And I really kind of uh, thought, well, I don't have you caught the bug. I caught the bug. I don't have I'm not solving cold fusion and I'm not doing fiber optics because I don't have that gift. Um, but I um, but I can help. Others. I mean, even when I was before I started my company, I was a social entrepreneur. I helped start charter schools, help programs, and all of it. The same thing. It's the same formula. One is that you. I mean, you have to listen and and you have to connect people to make you know and build a team around that idea. And I just got addicted to um, seeing an idea come into actually, um, you know, changing lives and changing companies. It's just a a fun thing to see. When you first started, you know, knowing what you knew and you had seen so many stories, sometimes it's different when we do it ourselves, right? Yeah. And who did you focus on? Like, what were you, you said, okay, here's a service. What were you thinking your original service was compared to what you do now? Well, early on, um, it was in the 90s, and this is when Google was going. I mean, that's when the, the birth of Google and something called SEO, search engine optimization. And, and that was when we were first looking at these companies of being the answer. I mean, this was the, really the first time that you could be an answer if you did it right a lot easier uh, without putting a lot of capital and cash out. Um, and so it, with, with the growth of the data, and, and I was always a, a data person before. And so that I, I just really got addicted to that process of that, that new tool in which we had. Um, so that's really kind of where we birthed out of it, just really leveraging the data and helping companies be that answer with a tool that gave you that answer pretty quickly. So when you started Proof Digital, you're thinking, we're going to do a lot of uh, different SEO services for companies. That and ads, and um, ads. Yeah. Okay. And, and but at the same time, marriaging uh, at the time, there was a lot of spammy stuff out there. So I knew that wasn't going to last. Um, but to the earlier point, people still won't say yes if you don't tell me the problem you solve and how you're going to make my life better. So um, you weren't going to win the long game if you if you try to just kind of trick me. So it was a combination of understanding helping folks narrow down on that brand message with it being the answer. How did you get your first customers? Um, ne- I mean, my network. I mean, I was always involved in the community. Um, and, um, and then from there, it was totally like a lot of companies, referral-based um, com- clients. And then you work on partnerships along the way, and then it kind of grows. Um, but people, I don't know, if you listen to them um, and they feel like you're listening to them, then, you know, uh, some of our, you know, favorite clients, um, they're not local, um, uh, a family-owned business in Nebraska, which is a couple states over. Um, they started their, their, their company with their grandfather out of the basement. And I just love their story. And they've grown and tripled. Um, the last several years for various reasons. And they're just a great company, great story, great people. If you listen to them and they feel like you kind of understand them, you build a partnership together. 
and then they tell other people. Is that um, Blackburn flag? Is that it is okay? It is. Talk about what you did with them. Well, um, again, one um, we they were not um, really on when we started with them probably five or six years ago. They really didn't have a position on online. I mean, they had a site, but it wasn't really set up. So we built an e-commerce site for them. Um, what do they sell? They uh, utility. You know the utility flags in your yard. Um, I mean, marking material for utility companies, for uh, green, um, for sporting uh, events. I mean, so anywhere you see those little flags uh, um, marked underground water or whatever. And they, their grandfather actually um, developed the machine to, to produce these flags. Um, Talk about a 70, niche. 70 That's years interesting. Ago. 70 years ago. They were sur- surveyors. They're, you know, they had, I think it was a brother or something who was a surveyor. And. It was a problem that needed to be solved at the time. How do you how do you mark underground, um, you know, wires, pipes, and those types of things when you're digging, right? And so it was a problem that needed to be solved. And they developed the machine, and now they have a reputable company. And so from a standpoint, they really weren't. Now they have an e-commerce site. They're selling all over the world. They also we've we've positioned them on Amazon as well. And so they've basically gone from not an e-commerce site. So so they do both have partnerships, but they are, and it's just a really great story of a company that um, over the years solved the problem and they're credible and they're, and they're good people too. So it's a, it's a great story. I love those. I love working with companies like that. So Stacy, how do you market such a sexy company like Flax? <laughs> well, it's again, I mean, it's not right. I mean, what problem do they solve? They have utility flags. So it's not, you're not selling to everybody. So you, people who need those construction, uh, I mean, they need those materials. So you, you, you repeat what they, the problem they solve that again, they've been in business 70 years. So they're credible, right? Uh, you uh, make it easy for people to purchase and communicate with them. So, and then you reinforce that reviews, for example. I mean, you reinforce that credibility. Um, and also the ease of checking out of those products. And then also work with them as a company. We work with them all across the board on how to improve systems and how, 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 how we can improve that process to, so that they can continue to grow. And so we're working with them on that now. I'd love to, if you're um, just listening and you, there is a video, um, we're looking at Proof Digital page right now. And um, I want to, because you mentioned the process. So I'd love to, uh, if you go to their um, proofdigital.com or looking at slash process to walk through just your roadmap to marketing success and kind of how you think about it. Right. Well, from a standpoint of, we definitely start with research from, from a standpoint, even before we even talk to a company, um, understanding, okay, um, how many people are actually who and are searching for the product and services? Is there a market there? Uh, so we dig into Google, you know, we, we use a lot of various tools and the, the data is there. So we dig into the data of what are their competitors doing? What are the competitors' weaknesses? What are, um, what are they doing right, it, um, the competitors, right? So we, we pull all that data and we understand going before we actually, you know, dig into the company. Um, where they are and where they are in the position in the marketplace. Then we kind of have a, a you know a conversation with them. We sit down and we talk to the company. What are they? What are their goals? What do they think? You know their uh, that their uh, differentiators are. Um, we audit their site. We audit their understand also where they are positioned as a company. You know what are their weaknesses? Um, so. There are a lot of tools, and on this, you talk about those tools, Google Analog, Google Webmaster Tool, but there's a lot of other tools in which we use to kind of dig in. Um, it's a lot of dotting I's and crossing T's, to be truthful. A lot of companies don't do that online, and so it's about where are the quick wins within those, that, those data points, within their site, within their competitors. So if there is an opportunity, like I gave you that one example of that, uh, that company of, hey, you really should, there's, there's, this is, um, this particular market education, for example, might not be as impacted by economic turns. 
Um, you have a product that serves their, their, their needs. How can we position the site in dots and I's and cross and T's of using the words in which people search for those, those, that solution? Um, how can we build copy around those solutions? And so we put a strategy around some of those quick wins. We, at the long time, at the same time, have a long-term play as well. And so how can we build, um, um, you know, some of those longer, more searched terms that you want to grow into? But here's an opportunity right here. Let's go after it. Yep. And, and then... again, the execution is dotting I's and crossing T's. I mean, I, I just say that because a lot of that online, it's just really that. Yeah. And measure. And measure everything. Um, I'm gonna bring up here. I was pulling up looking at this. Yeah. Uh, it's so interesting. Yeah. Um, they can go so many different directions with who would have thought just marking flags, right? From right. construction to dogs to sports to they have a bunch of other products here. Yeah. Um, they probably people ask them, I imagine, for hey, we need some paint to mark it up somewhere and they probably came up with this product i imagine right. right yeah and they have partners too they bring in some of their some of their products or some that they actually produce um and some so for example they've they have printing machines so they can actually you know print marketing you know material for for companies as well and there's the the 70 year that's the the grandfather there in the picture there um so um it's just a really good story um, and a really great, solid uh, company that that solved the problem. And um, we continue to work with them to be in front of those markets that would buy their product. I mean, that's a that's a that's a uh, an example. Um, but then there's other examples, too, in which there might be their goal is not necessarily that. I mean, we had a company in which we work was a SaaS company. That they really were, their 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 goal was to probably be bought. I mean, to be bought. I mean, to kind of saw, you know get enough consumers, get enough attention. And it was a, a SaaS pro product in the financial space and the accounts payable, accounts receivable space. Um, and they served a niche and got bought by American Express. So it just kind of depends on where they want to position themselves in the market. How did you, I don't know if you, um, you probably observed this because you were helping them um, position themselves and actually um, kind of work towards reverse engineering, accomplishing that goal, right? Because it seemed like in the beginning, they like, we want to get to this point, we want to get bought. Did you find that they, there were marketing campaigns or things to get the attention of these buyers or was it a separate process for that? Well, I mean, first they needed to have consumers themselves. So, I mean, they needed, and they already, so th this was a company actually that actually launched multiple companies. So they they were a software company that have a history of launching software so solutions um, for various markets. Um, and they already had the talent base internally and also had some customers from their other business lines that kind of benefited from this particular product. Um, and then... You listen to them too from a standpoint, really understanding the problem that they see that they're solving because it's a complicated solution. And, and also, who within the company would buy that solution? It's not necessarily who's the decision maker. Is it, I mean, and who's the, who's going to actually, is it the IT person who's going to implement it? Is it the head of accounting or the CFO who's going to implement it? So, really, really focusing first on selling the product. And then from there, from a branding standpoint and getting, I mean, just really, again, getting them found for that solution. So when American Express started looking in and th they actually did a lot of that themselves too, those relationship building, that they had the network of, of investors that helped. But when they, those, when they came looking at it, their, their site, their traffic, their data aligned with what they were looking to do. So it was still the same thing, marketing standpoint. I love the talk, Stacey, about team. You know, yeah, before yeah. we hit record, we were talking about how you're, you're kind of positioned and you have all the, you know, you have people in place to grow faster. Yeah. Okay. So who have you found, what positions have you found have been key pieces that you put in place over the years? So now that you're like, you're positioned for that growth, right. you know, in the beginning, it's just you, I imagine. Yeah. Um, what's it look like now? What are the key positions you had to put in place throughout the years? Well, um, 
One thing, I want to give an analogy, a little bit of team. I mean, team is so critical. I mean, when I was younger, I was a, a, a sports person. I, I played softball. And the, the thing that I realized there was that everybody kind of came with their different skill set and their different gifts. And recognizing that and, and embracing that, that was the biggest thing. So the team piece and, and really part of Proof's development is my desire to recreate that and understand that too. So even though I love helping companies, I love building um, our team. And so there's different skill sets you need. You need somebody um, uh, of recent uh, hire who's definitely more uh, overall strategy person. That, that's really been my role a lot. And then you have people who do the uh, dotting I's and crossing T's along the way. You have to have the, the folks who understand the data um, piece, the Google Analytics and the strategy. You have you have to have your business development person, right? You have to have your person who actually is collecting. I mean, from a business standpoint, we have operations, right? We have to have somebody who's, we are a business. We have to make sure we have systems in place that we're doing all the operations things. We have all the HR pieces in place. We have to have all the um, uh, collecting the, collecting our invoices, right? We we do have a service. And so we have to have somebody in those places. Um, you have to have um in place, the uh, folks so from a technical standpoint, we build sites, we have developers. And so we build sites because we found um, a lot of things were not dotting I's and crossing T's on that side of, of and it made it harder for us to do our job. So we have all those roles, traditional marketing roles that we have to have and those strengths. So the developers, the designers, the ad specialists, um, and then the overall strategy, really from a standpoint, um, and building more of that higher level strategy talent um, is really going to kind of the next level for the company, which we are have been doing. I have found um, Stacy talking to a lot of businesses and agencies specifically that director of operations is really a key role that has helped the founder step out of oh, yes. a lot of minutia and being able to work more on the business. So I love yeah. to hear what you look for in the director of operations position and then how you end up hiring those internal, external. Um, just walk me through that process a little bit. Um, one, trust. I mean, you are you have to have somebody you can trust implicitly. Um, so that because you're 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 given the uh, yeah, I don't know how many horror stories you have and from that standpoint. So the biggest piece was somebody that I trust trusted. So that is that is the the most important thing. And also there are resources there from a company standpoint. So we have someone internally who does that. But I also have a partner, um, Ready HR um, and uh, Pavilion Group, who serve in those roles who help me um, make sure we're following all those HR um, requirements. Make sure we have team members across the country. We, so we were built um, here from a standpoint of in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, I have team members who are employees of ours in multiple states. So I have a partner who takes care of all that. We, you know, all the taxes related, those types of things. So we have part, we have a, uh, they are a great partner of ours to kind of help us dot I's and cross T's on those Operational things, like you said, that I don't want to do or touch ever. So that organ, those organizations I trust, and also our operations uh, lead helps helps manage those partnerships, and then also just things internally. Like we talked about the team building. I mean, we're having you know we have team lunches virtually. We play you know sometimes we take a break and do interactive things with the team. Um, so that's, is critical. that the, um, the HR company that helps you come up with those things or who, or no, is that's, that that's our, that's our internal person who does, uh, on that piece. That's our internal person who def definitely comes up with an itch and it is her job, um, to really make sure that we, I mean, everybody, I mean, it's been a tough few years and we, we need to, I mean, we are, I mean, second family to a lot of these folks and you know we have to listen and, and be there for folks and um I'm, I'm proud that we 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 do that so especially in the environment virtual we were set up by the way well before covid on virtual so um we were built to work from anywhere um a decade ago so we were ahead of a curve was the director of operations in this situation um 
did they grow internally in the company or did you yeah. do a search? Yeah. So what were so internally. what was the trajectory of that person? Where did they start? Well, they were early. They were part time. I mean, they, we didn't have enough. We didn't have a team to manage. We didn't have enough invoices to send or, you know, so they kind of grew from a part time and, and they were working in multiple different companies that, in that role. And then I kept on taking more of that time and said, hey, come on, full time uh, over here. Um, so um, it really was. A, a the trust growth. really grew over time. And it was kind of it like did. dating in a sense, like you just kept working more and more together. It was. It was a, that position was definitely a dating position, and, and and it should be because, I mean, I said it's 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 the engine. I mean, or you can talk about whatever part of the plane it is, but it's a critical part of the plane. But without it, we don't have all those things working, um, and and putting systems in place, and the systems of time tracking, systems of of uh, project management, systems of invoicing, all those systems in place in the operation. It's systems like I mentioned. Uh, payroll, all those things, and managing all those systems, and um, so those things go seamlessly, so that we can focus on our clients. Yeah, Stacy, I have one last question um, sure. before I ask it. I just want to thank you. Thanks for sharing your journey. It's amazing uh, what you've gone through, and you know the experience you've had with so many companies. Uh, I want to encourage people to check out ProofDigital.com. Um, my last question is uh, Tech Stack. Um, yeah. You mentioned invoicing, time tracking, project management. So I'm wondering what tech stack you use as an agency for all these things. That's a that's a great question. So um, the various pieces, a um, couple of things. Google. I mean, we are from a standpoint of files, organizational Google um, suites is where we are. Is sharing documents and those types of things. Our um, Project management um, is pro workflow. We've tried all of them. To be truthful, the project management system is use it. I mean, embrace it. I don't care which one you use, use it. Um, and that also provides our time tracking as well. Uh, QuickBooks is our you know, uh, tech stack there. Um, but we have, um, I don't know how many technologies we use. I mean, those are, I mean, we have, we pay for technology across the board all the way from, you know, um, a Slack is actually a big uh, tech stack from communication that we use. Uh, so those are up all, all the time. Then you have tools like Loom, Cloud App, um, um, One Password, um, a, a lot of, and then obviously um, tools from a standpoint of Seamrush and others that uh, tons of other tech stacks that from a data standpoint that we use. So. Um, that's really our infrastructure. We don't have, that's what we, that's where our infrastructure lies is in our tech stack. You mentioned, um, like a ready HR. Is that like yeah. a software slash service? Um, ready HR, um, and, uh, Pavel group, they, they are a, um, organization that helps with, um, that, that payroll piece and that benefits piece that all that, all those things, um, that, make my life and my employees better life better. So yeah. Well, Stacy, thank you. Everyone check out proofdigital.com to learn more and more episodes of the podcast. And thanks everyone. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Dr. Jeremy. Had a great time. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See nice like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 